Okay, I'm going to get us going just uh, almost a minute early because <laughs> we might need a little extra time for this one. Um, this is our 1130 session, um, Big Changes in LTI with Dr. Chuck. Um, and Dr. Chuck needs no introduction, but I'll go ahead and introduce him anyway. He is uh, a professor, a publisher, online teacher, and all-around open source contri contributor. He's also our Sakai uh, founding architect and the chair of the PMC. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Chuck for his session on LTI. Uh, thanks, Wilma. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So Sakai is 20, 20 years old and a learning tools interoperability at this point in time is also 20 years old. And so um, just I'll, I will um, indulge in, hang on, I got to move a few things around on my screen. I'll indulge in a few uh, history bits. Is it working? I'm seeing your intro slide. I just had to get some of my cursors. So this is my rough agenda. I'm going to go into super old history uh, and then sort of more ancient history. Uh, let's go into camera, that camera instead. LTI 13 history, the history since LTI 1.3, where we're at with Sakai 23 and 25, and then sort of the future of Sakai and standards. So many of you don't know this, but long before uh, LTI, like in 1990, um, I was into standards and interoperability. And if you go to that URL that's on the screen, I was part of the IEEE standards activity that created this notion of what, in a sense, Unix, the APIs in Unix were supposed to be and how by using Unix APIs, life would be better. Um, and the video there is uh, something that we made on a, a $200,000 uh, stellar computer that was laid down one frame at a time on three quarter inch Umatic, and um, and it has you know crappy copyright free music and it's animation before it's 1990 right the internet didn't even wasn't even out in the real world by the time we did this so but then when Sakai started I was an interoperability nut I started interoperability before it was spelling corrected in word processors and so we had this thing called the tool portability profile in 2004 once Sakai kicked off we that tool portability profile kind of evolved from a very Java Blackboard-like thought, which is a bunch of Java APIs, which is how Blackboard worked, to a web service. And um, there was a critical meeting in August of 2004 that only had like six people in it with IMS. But the architects for Sakai, Blackboard and WebCT, me, were in that room. And uh, Chris Vento of uh, WebCT then, uh, proposed that we use web services rather than Java APIs, partly because WebCT wasn't written in Java, Blackboard and Sakai were. And that led to uh, kind of this web service integration that we called tools interoperability, which is very different than tools interoperability, learning tools interoperability. So we promised we would do a 2005 demo in Sheffield, England, and that's uh, Anthony White of University of Michigan and uh, Lydia Lee from Stanford University. And so literally 18 months into the project, we had created a standard, created demonstrations, and you'll see all the LMS vendors and a whole bunch of tool vendors in June 2005, back when I had such a terrible camera that it looked bad. That, that spec was released in November 2006. So in 2007, I, I had a bad year. Um, I resigned at the executive director of the Sky Foundation because I disagreed with the board. They wanted to spend all my money on open academic environment, and I wanted to spend my money, our money, on Sakai LMS. And so I became a faculty member at the U of M School of Information and walked away from Sakai leadership. And it was a, it was a dark time for me. Um, and so I dove into building standards for 2007, 2008, 2009. I needed a research area as a faculty member. Nobody liked LTI 1.0. It was a mess. I don't even remember why we didn't like it. But in 2007, Horizon Wimba had an idea. They had actually had a tool integration in Sakai using some weird web service and a launch inside of an iframe. And so they're like, well, we got all these things figured out. 
because we build a Sakai tool and then a proprietary, proprietary integration. Big Blue Button did a kind of a similar thing at some point. But things got quickly complex because they really wanted to over talk to the LMS. And so that sort of ran out of steam after 12 months. Horizon Wimba got tired of talking and everyone else got tired of listening. And then Pearson showed up and said, we have a better idea. This is how we integrate Pearson into all these LMSs. And they would build a building block and then have a um, callback to that building block. And they called it TPI, um, Tool Platform Interface. And Pearson said, we got a great idea. We'll, we'll make the standard based on TPI. And it quickly, again, got too complex because if you're building a building block in Blackboard and you have kind of a web service, you just add crap that you want. Oh, I'd like to get this information and that information. So the problem was is that the LMSs did not want to give all the data that either Horizon, Wimba, or Pearson gave themselves. So it got ugly and complex and no one really liked it anymore. And so I just like said, screw it. And I built in 2008, this thing called Simple LTI, which I took what Pearson had come up with and uh, just like, okay, I like this, I like that and all the rest of it we're not gonna do. And you can keep talking about it, but I'm gonna make a little spec myself. Within IMS at the time, I called it Simple LTI. And by 2009, I'd done a bunch of work with it and that evolved into Basic LTI. And in 2010, that was LTI 1.0, which was launch, but no grade passback. In summer 2008, to take this simple LTI stuff, I proposed um, a Google Summer of Code uh, with Sakai and the simple LTI stuff, which turned out to eventually be LTI 1.1. Um, we had one, our only one and only Google Summer Code, Katie Lucchini from McGill. She wrote what we became the LTI provider. Um, others like uh, Adrian have done a bunch of work. Um, and then uh, another friend of mine who I met, I don't know how, oh, because I was spending so much time in Spain, I guess, um, had another Google Summer Code with the idea of putting simple LTI into uh, Moodle. And so that was the initial LTI implementation for Moodle. And he was a Moodle contributor. We'd hope we'd sneak it into Moodle in 2008. And that was a pretty successful Summer of Code. Katie was one of the uh, best employees I've ever had because I was the worst manager of her and she was still successful regardless of how bad a job I did as her manager, boss, whatever. So <clears throat> that evolved into simple LTI, basic LTI. You can even see the word basic LTI in the spec, right? Um, and so LTI 1.0 came out in 2010 and I was working part-time as a consultant. I wasn't working for Sakai back then. I was working for IMS and I was promoting it. By, as LTI 1.1 was being published, we realized grades had to happen. So we built this XML basic outcomes thing that now is LTI 1.1. Um, I wished it wasn't XML. It wasn't my choice to make it XML. It was people in IMS that wanted it to be XML. By July 2010, we had LTI 1.1 in there and the spec came out in 2012. And when in the fall of 2012, when, um, when LTI was released and adopted, it was a big deal. And because my whole goal was to use this as a wedge into the marketplace to get to the point where each of the vendors had to one up each other and eventually we would have good things happen. So I wrote all the certification suites. I wrote the open source reference implementation. I promoted the spec through my now famous tattoo, the LTI ring of compliance, where I would challenge Blackboard and desire to learn and Moodle to comply with the spec and I put the tattoo on my shoulder and it is here to this day because they didn't tell me they were permanent. No, I'm just kidding. And so then what happened was um, in 2012, Blackboard bought Angel Learning and Moodle Rooms and a product that they were secretly building in the Skunk Works, David Mills, who was the Angel Architect, which was a multi-learning management system learning object repository called Explore. And they called me and they said, we just bought David Mills. Um, we we bought, uh, what was the name? The guy, Ray Henderson. Uh, we've, we've got Martin Dugiamas. I want you too. And I'm like, hey, you just have to give me this much, this much money. It was a large sum. And I'm going to work on nothing but Sakai. And Michael Chasen said, sure. 
So that started a two-year effort where I walked around with a Blackboard credit card with a $30,000 expense limit on it. And all I did was worked on LTI 2.0 and Blackboard paid for all that. LTI 2.0 was just, I wasn't really the IMS guy anymore. And there was a new IMS guy and he, he believed in like enterprise architecture and service discovery and Wisdle and crap like that. And Pearson liked that stuff too. They brought kind of a non-coding architect in. And so I spent my whole time yelling at those people, telling them to make it simpler, make it easier, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was a wreck. I couldn't stop it from being a wreck, but we jumped on it because if LTI 1.1 is a great idea, LTI 2.0 had to be a great idea. I mean, I literally went to Canvas, flew to Utah, and if you look in Sakai, there are places in Sakai where LTI 1.1 launches have Moodle variables that are in them if you want if you want to use them. So the LMS has kind of moved ahead, but the tools just, just yawned at it. And so actually 2018, LTI just was not adopted by the world, and I totally ripped it out. Um, actually, Blackboard ripped it out a couple of years later. And so LTI 2.0 was really very, very sad, right? And this is kind of my second dark ages. And um, the other thing that happened, I got distracted by Coursera and edX. And uh, they were founded in 2013. And in 2015, the founding schools left Sakai for Canvas. And like, I was really distracted with IMS from 2013 to 2015. They were just talking. Sometimes Google would have an idea. Sometimes Microsoft would have an idea. And they would just go back and forth and they'd waste six months trying to make Google happy so that if Google Classroom would implement LTI, life would be good. Or if Microsoft Teams would implement. And I'm just like, you people are, are just playing political games, not building standards. So I just kind of ignored them. I would listen and just roll my eyes continuously. Luckily, there was no video, so they didn't see me rolling my eyes continuously. But by 2015, Canvas had really bought in and doubled down on LTI 1.1 with tremendous extensions. And I have to give them credit. Um, and their LTI 1.1 plus like 50 extensions was like the best thing in the market. Blackboard building block wasn't very good anymore. LTI 1.1 wasn't very good anymore. Uh, you know, Moodle modules wasn't very good. And so what happened was, is it took that LTI 1.3 work and instead of like blah, 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 they were like, oh, we're going to all die. Because if Canvas's LTI 1.1 became the nature of the market, I don't, it has a lot of good ideas in it. It's surprisingly complete, but it's also kind of wretched in its own way because they were in a hurry. They didn't have to coordinate with anybody. And once again, like the Pearson and the Ryzen Wimba, if you're playing with both sides of the game, you get to mess with it and create a mess. And that's what they did. They, the, the Blackboard Explorer thing was playing with both sides. And so their protocol was not elegant. And it was also a disaster. Wasted year of my life. So I was so like down on LTI 1.3. But on May 2018, uh, Mark and Brent with me went with me to this uh, thing. I walked in to the LTI, uh, the learning impact, and I'm like, it's just going to be more crap. But it turned out that Martin Leonard, who is in the back, you can actually see in the back of this picture, like Blackboard's there, IMS is there, uh, somebody from D2L is there, and Martin Leonard, who's now the chair of LTI, he was in the back, and he brought in a reference implementation in PHP of both an LMS and a tool, and Claude Vandervoort, who's also now the core chair, had a Moodle prototype. And if you just watch this video, it's in the, the link is here. And you can see me in this video because literally 24 hours earlier, I was of the opinion that this was a stupid idea. This was a waste of time. It was in Orlando, Florida, and I was going there with Mark and Brent to enjoy. And this was a stupid meeting. 24 hours later, I thought LTI 1.3 was like the best thing ever. And you can actually see my brain in the, in the phase of changing of how cool LTI 1.3. So then for the next year, I became not a curmudgeon. I became a fan. Um, and it was released a year later, April 2019, with the, the four specs that are now um, LTI 1.3 launch, deep linking, names and roles, assignments and grades. And I built 
what basically was the reference implementation that everybody used except for me. I mean, except the IMS people could not build reference implementation fast enough. So I used SUGI as a certification feature so that everyone was compatible with SUGI and then everyone was compatible with each other. And what was cool was it's never happened. I don't expect it to ever happen again. All the major LMSs certi were certified, passed certification suites, and were highly interoperable on the day the specification was released. Probably the biggest missing thing at that point was dynamic registration, which was added in October 2020. So that's LTI 1.1. Luckily, I came around just in time. So we are sitting here now five years later. The Sakai 23 LTI, um, you know, LTI 1.3 is a great solution, not only because we build a great specification, but because the implementations in Blackboard, Sakai, Canvas, et cetera, have kind of evolved over time as we really began to understand things like PKI encryption, et cetera. The low-level libraries in PHP and Java that support PKI have gotten so much better in the last five years. The code that was in Sakai 19 that made this work was pretty scary, and I had some pretty scary dependencies to make all the public-private key encryption working, right? And so um, even though it was there since 19 and still there in 23, there was all this kind of like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, Canvas did it this way. That's how they do key, the key set. I'll do it that way too. And so you saw this kind of like ka-chunk, ka all these things that you, you barely noticed, but what it was was uh, collective engineering experience across the entire LMS marketplace that really defined what LTI 1.3 was supposed to be. There was protocols in the beginning, but then there was also LMS UIs that were beautiful and they competed on that. The problem with Sakai was I had been implementing every spec for 20 years. I would implement stuff that wasn't even released to hopefully get people to try it. So our administration UI was massive, hard to understand. I think I was talking to Christine and she said, oh, we talked to a vendor and they just said, check all the check boxes. Like it was that confusing. There was no good documentation. There were check boxes that came from a weird historical event when someone had a crazy idea in a working group and I implemented it to prove that it could be done or could not be done. And we hadn't refactored it. So, which so, um, who I hired, uh, he was a graduate student at U of M, graduated, and I got to have him for the summer. Um, he became a wizard at LTI, and I went crazy, and Andrea went crazy. You heard all the stuff that um, Wilma was talking about. The groups got fixed. The, the, this has got fixed. We changed how the dropdowns work. We There was parts of Sakai that, you know, the lessons add learning app was 10 years older than their rich text editor shopping cart. And it was just ugly. It was wrong. It had features that I had added close, just little tiny things here and a different little tiny thing there 10 years later. And it just was, it was terrible. And this was annoying to Matt Jones. Um, it was named a basic LTI and not LTI. And, and Matt Jones thought that is kind of tacky. So in Sakai LTI, we removed all times of cruft from the admin UI. We worked with the teaching and learning group. The instructor UI is simpler, more consistent. Um, and the source code is now in a folder called LTI and all the package names are LTI. Um, and that's in 25. We added a group service and we introduced the deploy to sites, the most requested feature of LTI for 10 years. By the time it was done, um, I think that there were over like 12 to 15 JIRAs that said exactly the same thing using different words, which is, I want to take this LTI tool and instead of going to all sites or one site, I want a list. And it was very, <laughs> and so, so people complained about this because the stealth feature started getting misused and that was not what I, it was meant to be, but I didn't write that feature because the stealth thing came in. And it was kind of a hack, a patch, and again, making our UI more difficult and all that 
I, I spent the entire summer of 2024 and Joe sent the entire summer. Joe became very good at the LTI code base. Um, and by the end of summer, we had something that I felt very, very proud of. And Wilma went through that uh, already. And um, it's, it's nice. It's impressive. There may be room for improvement, but all the obvious crap has been removed from it. So, so to some degree, 20 years later, Sakai was founded to make a tool portability profile. And we're sitting here, and I think I can kind of put a, put a fork in that one, that we did it. And Sakai now has a beautiful implementation of it, one that will hold us in good stead for many years. But Sakai, as an organization and as a product, is here to improve everybody, not just us, not just create proprietary crap that um, that that isolates isolates us from the rest of the market, but instead um, advocate progress. And I sat back and looked at the progress that we have made, and our work is not done. And so I went to the IMS meeting a couple of weeks ago and I found two new standards that are kind of quietly sitting in the shadows of one ed tech. And one is common cartridge 2.0. And the other one, strangely, is QTI. It seems like the third version of a standard is always the best. So QTI 1, which we have, QTI 2, which we don't have. QTI 2 plus APIP for accessibility extensions, which we don't have. The people who built all that stuff and were forced legally to implement QTI 2 plus APIP decided enough of this crap and they invented QTI 3. It is beautiful. At some point, I'll come to the teaching and learning group and show you an open source free reference implementation of the rendering of an infinite number of question types that are accessible, beautifully flexible, beautifully simple. There's no authoring environment, but I talked to the guy who built all that and he's, I showed him lessons because it's actually very similar to lessons for the authoring environment. So watch this space about dealing with our content. I think our tools are fine and there will be new specs that come along, but, uh, but the content is the where things are at. So we started all this in 2004, 20 years ago, I struggled in obscurity. Like 2014 was when LTI 1.1 started really happening. We have been the first to implement, but it made our code crufty. The Sakai and uh, Sugi have been the, a guiding star for the whole market with reference, reference, reference implementations that you can read, free servers, interoperability testing, et cetera. We have always placed market adoption of good standards interoperable over our own competitive position. We have never worked in this space in a way that was a win-lose between us and the market. Oh, thank you. My name is speaker name and there's my contact info and my website. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Chuck, for that trip down uh, the LTI memory lane. And definitely some super exciting stuff happening um, right now in the LTI space. And I think you'll see a lot of improvements. I know Jennifer asked in the chat if this would help with textbook implementations. And I think that it absolutely will, particularly if you have something where um, you've got like a link that needs to go into a bunch of courses. You can now deploy that to those courses a lot easier. Um, so there should be a lot of things that uh, are just smoother with LTI 1.3. Um, so yeah, but but I, I don't know if Jennifer is really asking about LTI 1.3, but certainly LTI 1.3 has always made that better. But um, the one thing that uh, that LTI and common cartridge in the current form like is this thing called a thin cartridge, which is just putting into your LMS a bunch of links to somewhere else, and it means that things are difficult. Um, to, to reauthor, difficult to reorganize. Um, and so I think that the, the, 
the, the value, and Wilma and I have talked about this a lot, especially with respect to Sakai Plus, is Common Cartridge 1 was designed as a low fidelity import and export format. It was the least common denominator. If you get a cartridge from the, the publisher and you import it into Sakai, it's wretched, literally, in every LMS. But these LMSs have high fidelity imports and exports. And so we made Common Cartridge a, just a terrible subset because it was necessary in 2006 to get adoption. But people hate it because you lose all the fidelity. If you author a nice thing in lessons, you can't take that over to Canvas and have it look good, right? And a lot of people who've converted from Sakai to Canvas just have to redo courses. And so that's bad. And then in the future, when all these people are converting from Canvas to Sakai, we don't want to lose the Canvas high fidelity stuff. <clears throat> so the Common Cartridge 2.0 aspires to be a extremely high fidelity import and export format. And LTI 3.0, LTI 1 was a least common denominator, which means you get some multiple choice and fill in the blank and like two more. But LTI 3 has got like drag and drop native. I mean, it, it's got assets. It's got auto, it's audio things. If you think about the stuff from QTI 3, and again, I'll come to I'll come to teaching and learning and talk about this. If you think about what we have been adding to Samigo over the years, QTI 1.3 already has it. I mean, QPI, QTI 3.0 already has it. So Common Cartridge 2 is a high fidelity lessons like experience in any LMS. And LTI 3 is a Samigo like experience from an LMS. Now, going back to your McGraw Hill or your Cengage. That's when um, <clears throat> that's when they can produce both a set of amazing questions and give you an amazing pool that's actually useful that helps you teach and an amazing experience that comes into lessons and looks like it was handcrafted by Wilma in lessons. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got it. Um, we used up five extra minutes, so I will uh, I will stop there. Um, just watch this space. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Chuck. And yeah, we did run over a little bit. Um, so our next session is starting at noon. So you've only got about three minutes in between. But um, just to keep us on track, um, we'll be coming back in about three minutes for our um, VPAT session. So I'll see you then. <laughs>